going on guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Today we're going to be looking at the throat chop and how to deploy it properly. Yeah, I get it. There's not much, doesn't take too much to like bang a mother flower in the throat, right? But there are some intricacies here that we need to be thinking of. Before I get into that, I want to say this. The throat chop is not something that we want to use like in your average bar fight. You know, certainly not in the ring. Uh, certainly not with drunk Uncle Ned that, you know, is being an asshole, right? This throat chop technique is lethal, it's deadly, it's meant to be used in a, a battlefield, combat situation against a terrorist or, you know, something like that. Not to be used during road rage, all right? You get the point. You chop somebody right in the windpipe, it's going to swell up and they'll probably die. Like, even if the EMTs show up eventually, there's not too much we could do for them. I, I used to be an EMT, I used to be a firefighter EMT for eight years. I'm telling you right now, like, yeah, maybe the medics come, there's some interventions you can do and stuff, but it's, it's not looking good for the prognosis of the patient uh, if their windpipe, if their trach starts swelling up like that. So this will uh, very likely kill somebody. So don't, don't ever try this like if it's not appropriate. Kidnapping, you know, hostage situation with a terror, whatever, like far out scenario you can think of. Yeah, like this is, a, this is a deadly technique, so be very cautious with it. We assume no liability, and this is for entertainment purposes only. But anyway, guys, let's get into the intricacies of Fairburn's throat chop, and we're going to discuss how to follow through with it and how to protect yourself if your opponent becomes combative in return, which you should always expect. Even if you hit him just right, the throat wells up, he'll probably more than likely get combative and rush into you at, you know, at some point. And if he doesn't, you got lucky. Let's take a look at this, guys. What's going on, guys? So, uh, my freaking microphone died in the middle of recording the last segment. So, I'm going to have to have you bear with me and listen to all this damn background noise. I do live in a city, so we do what we have to do to get these videos done. Now, I want to explain to you the intricacies here of the chop and really make sure that if you need to use it, you're able to use it in the right way. So, I'm talking here! Freaking noisy. Anyway guys, um, well, the most important thing about all of this World War II based combative stuff is that you like, subscribe, and share the video. That helps us out immensely and if you do like what we're doing here and you want to help us out, that's the way that you can do it. So, weight distribution. How important is this? Like we mentioned this earlier, we went into it a little bit. How how important is weight distribution with, with this specific technique? It's very important. So let me demonstrate this for you. So right, right. I'm striking, you can see it move a little bit, like it's okay. Um, if I struck someone in the throat with that, like it could hurt them. But watch this though. Right, you see the bag moves just a little bit more. Right? Obviously that's a heavy bag, so, but it's really important that we utilize all of our body weight and put it into that small surface area that we're trying to attack. In this case, the throat. So in my case, I'm 195 pounds. I wanna take as much of that 195 pounds and place it in a very violent way into the throat, into a small surface area. Now, when we do utilize this technique, like we said before, this, this is very dangerous. This more than likely will seriously, seriously injure somebody. So I want you to be aware of that. But when we do have to utilize this in a combat situation or you know, against a, a violent terrorist or whatever the case may be, we really want to make sure that we're tweaking all of our weight and distributing it into that area so that we don't waste a lot of energy here. All of this World War II based combative stuff is all about conserving our energy so that we can be more combat effective in the future. Whether it's another another attacker comes out of nowhere or whether it's, you know, we have to fight later on in the situation, we want to make sure we're not expending all of our energy sitting there trying to fuck the dude, gas ourselves out, you know, typically like a lot of guys will have about 30 seconds in especially if they're not breathing right, and if it's a really like life and death situation, you know, 30 seconds to a minute of all out fighting is what most people have, unless you're doing a lot of cardio, unless you're doing a lot of boxing or MMA or whatever, you know, 
know, you can expect to last about 30 seconds to a minute in a, in a really bad situation. So we want to make sure that we really utilize and maximize every strike that we deliver. We want to make sure that that does what we want it to do. So the intended job on this is to well up the guy's throat so that he can't breathe anymore. And that eventually, more than likely, we assume that he might perish. So when we do that, we're doing it through footwork. Now watch this footwork. Right? You can see my feet? Yeah, awesome. I'm stepping into it. My rear foot, or my front foot rather, is stepping, and my rear foot is also stepping. Kind of like a boxing jab, right? One, and we come in and we step in. But in this case, it's a chop. Now, there's two schools of thought on this. There's more than two schools of thought, but in my case, and from what I'm gonna show you, there's two schools of thought. We've had steps like this and use kind of more of a boxing stance. If you do a lot of boxing, if you do a lot of Muay Thai, this might be more natural. Or you can come from more of a neutral stance and strike and just utilize that front foot. Whatever you like to practice, whatever you train, realize that's going to be um, ingrained into your muscle memory. So if you train more like this, stepping in, or if you train more like this, uh, that's going to be kind of ingrained in your muscle memory. So do it the right way. Now another thing that we want to think about is protecting ourselves. Now you saw when I did that chop, my hand was down here, right? Well, it's doing really no good being down here. You know, unless I'm, you know, controlling a sidearm or something like that or whatever, which, you know, if you do have a CCW, think about that. But I really want my hand up here protecting myself because, again, when you come in here, we strike this guy. What more than likely is he going to do if he's being attacked? Probably one of two things. He's either going to strike back at me or he's going to rush in. So we need to be prepared for both of those eventualities. And the best way, in my opinion, to be prepared for that is by gluing your hand to the top of your head and making a shield here. Now, you guys who have boxed or done, you know, any striking kind of Muay Thai stuff like that, be familiar with covering up. Covering up. You can cover up here, you can cover down here, but you, you really want to make sure that you are protecting yourself while you like it. So, up here would be a good way, a good place to keep your hand up here all right now another thing we want to think about here is the follow-through the follow-through is going to be incredibly important because we come here and we chop him right we're taking our i'm just keeping my hand down so that you can see my face and see my beautiful lips while i talk but we come here and we come here right well we want to retract this and when we retract it where does it go take a look at this it's pretty cool so we chop we cover now this comes back and creates what? Kind of like an O'Neill shield, right? I think that's what they call it, O'Neill cover. Come here, we chop, and we bring it back, all right? And look where our elbow is. Not only is it covering ourselves and protecting ourselves, again, remember the top part of your head, it's like a very sturdy thing. So if he starts winging straight shots back at you, which a lot of people don't, but if he does, you can simply kind of cover and put your top of your head down and absorb those strikes into the hardest area of your body, right? We're all about the head butts here. Well, this is a really great place. If you need to get hit, <laughs> to get hit. So you're covering up here, right? And notice my other cheek is tucked down into my chin and I'm pretty protected here. Like my eyes are vulnerable, but again, what are you gonna do? You gotta see, right? So that's really a, a really cool thing that we strike him and we come right into that O'Neal cover. Now, I mentioned the fact that he might rush into us. Well, if he rushes into us, we chop him, and he starts rushing in, well, he's gonna rush into our elbow, right? So we can, let me show you that with my footwork. We can then take the advantage and kind of press our elbow into him, right? I mean, is this gonna like uh, mess him up? Is this gonna like knock him out if we rush in with that on it? No, but it's, uh, it's definitely better than letting him rush into us you know, take an underhook and, and get to work, you know, if he's a wrestler or a grappler, right? So instead, we throw that chop, we come back, we're in our O'Neal cover, and if he starts rushing into us, we can hit him with a hard surface of the, uh, hard surface area of the elbow, maybe start angling off for footwork or whatever. Just an idea, just something to play around. Now, another thing that we can be thinking about here is follow through strikes. What are some follow-through strikes 
that we could utilize from this O'Neill cover. Chop. We bring it back, right? Now, what do we have available from here? Well, I think you probably have guessed it, but if you haven't, the hammer fist, right? So we chop, we're in the O'Neill cover, and then we can hammer fist. So check it out. Chop. And then we can go back with that hammer fist. Just an idea, just, again, something to play around with. These are all concepts. I never want you to take what I'm saying as, like, doctrine or, like, you do it like this every time. It's, it's called martial arts for a reason, right? It's conceptual. Everything is able to be played around with. So check this out. Strike it. Renato Nioko. We hammer face. What else do we have available that we can follow through with? The knee, right? Look at how beautiful it is back here. It's all set up for us. It's, it's, it's a thing of freaking beauty, it really is. So we go ahead, we chop him, we're coming back with that O'Neill cover, right? We're ready to do our fancy like <laughs> elbow techniques if we need to, but then we're also gonna hit him with that hammer fist. Again, probably in the jaw, right? Hopefully in the jaw, but you know, in the nose is available too, the temples. You guys are all warriors, you know where to strike. So we hit him with that hammer fist, and then, huh, it's just so nice. It really makes me smile. The knee strike. All right, and we, again, are gonna head for the groin, um, the top part of the thighs, the sides of the thighs, the, the bladder area, you know, the stomach, not so much, but the rib cage up here. If you're like limber and you can get it, yeah, sure. But again, you guys probably, if you're watching this channel, probably know kind of where to strike. So. Now that's a, a three-tier combo, and I, I like to use three-tier combos. I love using three-tier combos. I don't ever want to assume that I chop him and he goes, what, and he dies, right? <laughs> no, like, generally that's not going to happen. Maybe, you know, maybe you get lucky, but we want to prepare for the fact that, you know, we don't. So we chop him in the throat, we come and hammer strike him, hopefully on the side of the jaw, and then we can knee strike. Now, when we do that knee strike, obviously it's a slick heavy bag, right? I didn't put a t-shirt on it or anything, but can do that um, but I like to grab all right I like to grab when I do a knee strike and then always generally speaking after I throw a knee I'm gonna angle off right one two I like to grab whether that's getting an underhook and grabbing for that knee strike or maybe it's grabbing grabbing a hold of some clothing and getting that knee strike but I never stay static afterwards I always after I have followed with that knee strike I move all right and then we we have on GoToFightingSecrets.com courses in World War II base combatives that we teach, and we'll show you how to go ahead and get like the Fairburn shoulder lock, and we'll demonstrate the footwork of all of that. Very effective stuff. Um, it's battle tested and proven. I mean, this stuff is it works. But for now, I just want to kind of discuss these concept concepts with you and kind of get you thinking about it. Um, get the discussion going. I mean, if you guys have better ideas, if you have other ideas, if you have something that you'd like to share with the community, I mean, this, this is what it is. Freaking YouTube is a community of people, right? And our channel is a community of warriors, like-minded people. So if you have anything that, you know, you want to bring to the forefront here and put into this conversation, hey, we're, we're all about it. You know, just be respectful. That's all we ask. So one more time, let's look at this. I throw all my body weight into that chop, right? <laughs> And then I can go ahead, O'Neal cover, punch, and then I can clear the face, and then from there, I can throw in that knee strike, and again, from there, never stay static. I'm always gonna move afterwards. And if you wanna learn that footwork, go to fightingsuperstars.com is the website. And then from there, we can obviously go with like field trip sweep. You can do, uh, there's so many things. Once you get his back, I mean, the world's ocean, right? We can do a Japanese strangle, a rear naked choke. We can pull his head back into a knee strike into that lower back there's a lot we can do but again once or two is back I mean <laughs> the fight's kind of over for him hopefully anyways if you got value out of this guys if you like it again hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe share all that stuff we do have an option to join the channel uh, for three bucks a month starting level it's less than a cup of coffee right I got Starbucks down the road there I can't get a freaking cup of coffee for like three bucks but you can support us 
and help us out. And what do you get in return? That's the most important thing, right? right? We get members only uh, live streams where we talk about really niche stuff like how to survive a nuclear war in detail, but you also get um, entered automatically into our giveaways. Like last week, we gave away an ounce of silver. The week before that, we gave away a tactical shooting bag. Uh, the week before that, we gave away a tactical belt, right? We don't do it every single week because I got a freaking like, I don't want to go broke. But at the same point, we try as much as we can to give back to the guys who are supporting us, guys and girls that are supporting us. And we do that by doing a lot of fun giveaways. And it's fun for us. It's fun for everyone involved on the team. If that's something you're interested in, click the blue button below. It says join. Pretty easy, right? YouTube makes it very easy. All right, guys. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you in one of our next videos. Cheers.